So here's some initial rate data. So we've got five different experiments here. And we're given the initial rate of the reaction. And we're also given the concentration, presumably in moles per liter, of x and of y. And the balanced equation is on the top here. And we're asked, first of all, to determine the order of the reaction. So what's the best way to do this? Probably the best way to do this is to look at pairs of experiments where only one thing changes. And so if you look at this pair right here, you can see that the concentration of Y doesn't change at all, but going from the bottom of the pair to the top in the pair, okay, we have doubled the concentration of X. And if we look at the rate of the reaction, it's gone up by a factor of four. And so in general, we know that if the rate is, say, proportional to x, okay, then if we double x, then we'll double the rate. Now, if it's proportional to x squared, if we double this, we will take 2 to the 2, which is 4, and multiply that by the rate. So it's pretty clear in this problem that x is second power, so second order with respect to x. So let's try and find another pair of experiments where, say, the concentration of x doesn't change, but the concentration of y does. And so we can look at maybe the third and the fifth one. And if we compare these two, right, we can see the concentration of x doesn't change. But going from the bottom pair to the top pair, we've doubled the concentration of y. And what have we done for the concentration of or the initial rate? Then that's gone up by a factor of 8. And so what does that mean? That means that the rate, well, if it were directly proportional to y, as we doubled y, it would double. If it was proportional to the second power, as we doubled it, it would go up by 2 to the 2, which is 4. So clearly that's not correct. If we go ahead and maybe it's proportional to the third power, then if we double y, the net result is going to be 2 to the power of 3, and that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So that tells us that it must be third order with respect to y. So that means that we can now write the rate of this reaction as k, a rate constant, times by x to the second times by y to the third. And so if you like, it's a fifth order reaction overall. So in the last part of the problem, we're given the initial concentration of x and y, and we're told to find the initial rate of disappearance of x. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for x and for y, and we're going to calculate the rate. So clearly there's one more thing we need, and that's our rate constant k. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So here's our rate table here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute in and solve for k. So we can rearrange. We can say k is equal to the rate divided by x squared y cubed. We can pick any one. Um, let's go ahead and pick the third one. Why not? And so the third one, the rate is 4.064 molarity per second. And then the concentration of x, that is 0.4 squared times by the concentration of y, that's 0.6 molar cubed. So we're going to need a calculator, I guess. And that comes out to be 118 Significant figures. Well, actually, I should have written two significant figures for each of my concentrations. So really, I can't go past the second digit here. Now, the units are kind of squirrely here. So our units on the top are molarity per second. And on the bottom, it's molarity squared. And then molarity cubed. And so, of course, that gives us molarity to the fifth on the bottom. So let's get rid of that and write molarity to the fifth. We've got a molarity on the top, and so that cancels out with one of the five on the bottom, giving us molarity to the fourth. So that's one over seconds, molarity to the four, 
And so we can rewrite that as molarity to the minus 4 seconds to the minus 1. And so those are our units for the rate constant. So now we need to find the rate. And so now we've got the rate constant. We can just substitute in the value for x and the value for y. So 0.3 molar for x and 0.4 for y. So let's go ahead and do that. So our rate is equal to k times by x squared times by y cubed. And now we know all of these things, don't we? So our rate is equal to 118 molar minus 4 seconds minus 1 times by x, which is 0.3 times by y, which is 0.4. And if you look at the units, um, the units should come out pretty nicely, actually. The units come out, I believe, uh, molarity per second. And then if we look at the number part, we'll need a calculator. And that comes out to be 0 0.677 molarity per second. And again, in that problem there, I used the unrounded value of k in my calculation.